Ah, welcome to this video on magnetic rifling. I'm making this video in uh, the hope that someone may be able to join me with this patenting adventure. Right now I just have a patent pending which allows for many options for a partner who would look like to join me. So if anyone would like to join me just contact me for that email in the bottom of the description. Right, so what is magnetic rifling? Magnetic rifling is basically uh, spinning a projectile down a smooth bore with external magnets. So in other words, we just remove the grooves and lands from an existing rifle and we use an external magnets to spin the projectile. Nothing new, what has been thought of for many years. Right, why invent a magnetic, why invent a <coughs> magnetic rifling and smooth bores? Uh, we have perfected the rifle barrel uh, it's made very economically, very accurate today. Why go ahead and go back to old smoothbore barrels? Okay, well, here's me, here's others. We're all both on this journey and we hit a common point and it seems to be around the common denominator of spherical ballistics. If anyone follows my channel, you'll know that I invented a plane gun, which is a very accurate gun with very high RPM. And I needed a way of magnifying the uh, spin rate without increasing the RPMs because this thing spins incredibly fast and uh, I just came across this concept of playing with maybe perhaps magnetic rifling would um, give me a boost but to my surprise I was actually achieving static stability with the barrel not spinning so uh, in the video demonstration later you'll see a static barrel showing that so I thought I had to go ahead and pursue it and ended up becoming to a point of patent pending. So, right, also it's a part of my spinal cord research, spherical ballistics is there. Uh, part of my Christian pursuit, which is I set myself an extremely high challenge and I tell you this magnetic rifling was not, not an easy nut to crack. And it's becoming a synthesizer, as a Christian synthesizer. It took me six months of intensive prayer to achieve this uh, by my Saviour Jesus Christ and we talked every day and uh, in fact he's the other patent holder in this if I could not have done it without him. Also flat earth research if um, anyone follows my channel you know that I'm a little bit dabble into flat earth a bit um, if we couldn't go into space and we couldn't take a picture of the earth how would we measure whether the earth's is a sphere or whether it's flat or does it spin so it's a little hobby of mine um, so I just do some um, basic science on that so who's also interested in this the spherical ballistics gun manufacturers scientists gun manufacturers big time why have a smooth ball reusable ammunition we can actually use a ball bearing so we can actually go back to the old BB gun and achieve accuracy. And as you were a kid in the 50s, you had a BB gun, you'd fire these BBs and race around and collect all the pellets and reuse them again. You know, they were actually steel balls that um, but ricocheted everywhere, of course. But Okay, so let's uh, move on now. Why would um, gun manufacturers use reusable ammunition? Right, reusable ammunition, very important. If you live in America at the moment, it's a big, uh, big factor. You can't get ammunition. And some basic statistics I've come across is uh, there's approximately 10 billion pieces of ammunition used every year, of which of that 80% is small caliber, 0.22 air rifles, etc. Uh, rimfire, which makes sense because that's uh, you use your small caliber to do your practicing and honing your skills. Our target shooting is a focus now becoming more uh, on smaller caliber, uh, more accuracy and high velocity. And they're looking at this zone here, the 2.7 millimeter zone, which is the ideal size for target shooting. Uh, if you just want to make a hole in a piece of paper, you can achieve this. You don't need huge amounts of energy to lob a projectile 300 meters when it's 0.27 millimeters in size. So again, it needs to be a ball bearing to do that. Uh, there's talk of um, 
I've obviously had Gore's gun, so this is a big one at the moment. And uh, 20 years from now, the prediction that all target rifles and an Olympic sport will be using these Gore gun, Gore's guns, so that's magnetic rifling into a T. And removing these chemicals from, chemical propellants from existing. We don't need to shoot targets with chemical propellants. And for goodness sake, they're still using this lead peroxide in um, primers. I'm pretty sure it's still using it. Just go to my channel on, uh, on the placenta and find out why the, why the creator gave us a separate... Our brain is separated from our, our body through a placenta. Goodness sake, lead peroxide goes straight into your brain. Um, look, not trying to focus too much on guns. Astronomy. Um, is the it's spherical objects? Wow, you know why? <laughs> as far as I could see, there's been no research, no experiments done on spherical objects. It's all mathematics. So uh, what we really need is spinning objects uh, in pure magnetic rifling to create these conditions, so we can experiment and see how. Uh, objects react with each other rather than just pure mathematics to do our assessments. Okay, let's just move on now and we'll show the demonstration of the firing of the magnetic rifling. Right, just before we go into the video uh, demonstration, I'll just answer some questions that keep coming up and the big one is uh, why still no live fire? Okay, well I'm Live fire to me is a very expensive exercise. Um, to do any demonstration, A, you cannot fire in, in Australia, you cannot fire or discharge a firearm in a, in a residential area. And um, my spring loaded device, as you know, is just no more powerful than a toy Nerf gun. So I can go quite ahead and do these experiments in my lab. And I do many, many hours of uh, experiments, which going to a gun range, to test an experimental rifle, which probably they would not allow me on the, on the on the course. So, plus the fact that all this the exact same physics applies whether you fire this thing from a live fire or a toy spring. So, hopefully that's the reason. It's just still out of the question. Uh, all that being said, uh, someone else might come who's who's equipped for this in Peyton. That's a different story. Right, the projectile type. Um, again, it's just this 4mm, all clean guns at the moment are 4mm for our testing, in diameter by 8mm. It just uses a piece of this, uh, I cut down a piece of this 4mm steel rod. It's actually quite good because it has a zinc coating. Uh, zinc loom. I think it's actually zinc loom, which is very good lubricant. So that's the answer of the projectile. Just four millimeters in diameter by eight millimeters long. Same as that other plane gun. If you go to that video. Uh, question other one is: Can I increase the firing distance? Well, yes. I actually I've gone from my four mil four meters to seven meters. So hopefully that will um, answer a few other questions. Okay, so let's go now and do that uh, demonstration. So here we are with the experiment and the demonstration of the mag magnetic rifling. Uh, as it's based on a typical plane gun, which in this case is spring loaded, as with my other plane gun. I won't go into too much detail because there's a very good video on the operation of the plane gun, but basically all plane guns are just a simple smoothbore barrel. And in this case it's a stainless steel, 0.5 millimeter wall thickness. Uh, all plain guns must um, barrel must be able to turn on a bearing, and it must be able to slide. Uh, this uh, plain gun has uh, is aligned with a crude laser light, which goes down the bore. All plain guns are uh, laser from a remote point; they're never bore scoped. You never do that and the laser comes out the other end and we'll see the target later on. 
magnetic rifling has been around for a long time and uh, I won't there's much written about this but I don't know whether anyone's actually perfected it and patent a working concept but um, it's been out there for a long time and it's basically as you can imagine a, a magnetic or a non -mag um, or a iron based projectile is fired down a smooth bore and it is uh, in the stabilizing spin is produced by series of magnets along the way. Now just imagine these blocks here were magnets. Uh, in my case, my magnetic, a typical magnetic shroud looks like this, which I can't show you too much about, how it operates as it's um, part of this thing on YouTube about manufacturing guns, as if this is a typical gun, it's not really, it's just a toy. In this case I'm just using a Here's one set up with a brass barrel, a five millimeter brass barrel. Uh, I've typical um, length would be this. This is a demonstration for um, my experiments. This is more for experimental use, which I can actually add more shrouds. Okay, I think that's about it. Um. Right, here we are at the target end, which is just a box with a soft land made out of a piece of cloth. The target is just some cardboard. It's a nice piece of white cardboard. I'll just line up the laser now. We'll do a dot. Okay, here's my laser dot, which is pretty crude. I'll actually, just for interest, I'll spin the barrel just to show you that typical plane effect. That dot should not move in the, that dot, the dot should not move up or down or across, which is a typical plane gun standard. Let's go to that. Turning it now. I might just move that across a bit so it's more centered. Okay, here we are. We're not talking about accuracy. We're just talking about our spin rate. Just make sure we've got a stable, not a keyhole effect. So here's our target, roughly. Right, let's go. So here we are with uh, experiment number one, without any magnetic rifling, just a straight barrel. So we should see a pretty ugly shot at the other end. The heavily keyhole, I'd imagine. So here we are with uh, experiment number one without any magnetic rifling, just a straight barrel. So we should see a pretty ugly shot at the end. The heavily keyhole, I'd imagine. Okay, look, I'm just not real happy with that uh, cardboard, how it's giving the imprint. That was the other shot I did. It, um, I think I'll, I, I just think this cardboard here makes a better, I'll just lay this over the top for our next shot because I think it seems to not make a nice hole, it sort of rips rather than, okay so here we go, I'll just set up again for our, for our magnetic uh, rifling tests. Okay, here we go for our third experiment. I've just placed a, a cover over that magnetic shroud, just in case there's an issue with YouTube. And as fairness to anyone who wants to come in the patent, I don't want to give too many secrets away. So here we go for the magnetic rifling test. Rifling test. Oh, okay. This is very interesting. Um, I didn't have enough spring tension on that shot, but it probably would have hit dead bullseye. Um, I'll just do another setup. I'll do another one. Just turn that upside down. All right, another 
experiment number four, I've just increased the spring pressure. That projectile did not go through. So it actually wasn't going fast enough to make a nice clean cut. So hopefully this one will show that demonstration. Maybe there's that extra layer of cardboard. Okay, hopefully that one went better. I'll measure it to the other end. Yeah, okay. That's with a uh, nice clean hole. We'll have a look at that close up later on. Alright, I'll just do another one to make sure it wasn't a fluke. Yeah, here we go. Oh, experiment number five and shot number five. Using magnetic rifle. And hopefully, this is the another clean cut hole. What cut? Okay, here we are at the target. That last shot was uh, definitely a wad cutter, but not quite ripped the paper totally, but it's a nice round hole. And here's our nice round hole. This one here was that funny shot, um, didn't go right through, but you can see the bruising. It made a, definitely a, tried to go through square, but it sort of went a bit funny. Okay, the other side was a bit Okay, it was a good idea to change that cardboard uh, I had to dig this one out, made a bit of a mess But uh, here's my two splats uh, This one here, sorry, these two and that's that. This one actually went in, a square, believe it or not um, But like I said, it was a good idea to change that cardboard I've just done uh, another keyhole shot and a magnetic shroud shot and I've also flipped the target over. Uh, I'll just do another shot without the magnetic shroud because that cardboard is making a nice impression. Uh, also while I've sort of here I get quite often asked why I've gone purely electronic with my firing of the release of the spring. It's because uh, Roughly the spring is roughly the same size as that of a firing pin spring in a, in a handgun or a rifle and I was amazed at the amount of recoil that is generated just by the firing pin. So I just roughly have this calibrated to a firing pin so let's mark that and just show you how much recoil there is. So here we go and anyway hopefully should get a nice uh, keyhole shot on that cardboard. So I'll just roughly have this calibrated to a firing pin, so let's mark that and just show you how much recoil there is. So here we go, and anyway, happy should get a nice uh, keyhole shot on that cardboard. results from that last shot which is a certainly a keyhole splatter uh, down here was that nice you might have caught it um, rifle magnetic rifle shot the other one I did and believe it or not I did a keyhole right on top of it so I reversed the, the target to give me a bit better demonstration okay I think that's some Before we terminate and go to the whiteboard, I, I'm actually seven metres away from the target. I'll just give you that shot, pan around to it. Down the bottom of my lab there, there's a the target, seven metres away. So it's quite a long distance for the spring loaded apparatus. So, okay, let's uh, more meet now back at the whiteboard. In our summary, we just go over those points. Uh, we did see spin stability in our demonstration, which was from the three wad cutters. 
Accuracy was in our bit in question, as we know that wasn't the game, the name of the game, or after spin stability. My next video will show spherical objects, we'll start using those miniature ball bearings, uh, that's the one everyone wants to see, our 4mm four four millimeter ball bearing will be the big one, we'll now start seeing accuracy and they'll be in my next video. Um, just summing up in the patent. I guess immediate application for this is uh, air rifle manufacturing. So, you know, back to the old Daisy air rifle with an extremely accurate reusable ammunition. So, possibly, I don't know where. Anyway, whoever's interested, please contact me on the email at the bottom of the description. Thanks very much.